Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the electrolysis of molten substances and hopefully by the end of this film you'll understand why this is actually quite a difficult thing to do on a practical um, level and you'll also be able to explain the observations that um, are made at the electrodes using half equations. Okay so why is it a difficult sub, um, uh, process to carry out on a practical level? Um, well because most ionic substances have very very high melting points. Um, here we've got a photograph of what I presume is the electrolysis of lead bromide. I say that I presume that because there's no signs to say for certain but we've got red vapors above the melt here so maybe some bromine is forming and we've got a silvery liquid down the bottom which could be any number of metals I'm thinking that this is probably electrolysis of lead bromide because lead bromide has quite a low melting point compared to most ionic substances and clearly this substance has been melted over a Bunsen flame which isn't something you'd be able to do with most ionic substances. In fact if we look at the electrolysis of molten aluminium oxide which is used to actually manufacture aluminium on an industrial scale you can see here that the aluminium oxide is actually dissolved in another, another substance called cryolite and the reason we do that is because aluminium oxide has got such a high melting point that it would be almost impossible to keep it molten even with the massive amounts of electricity that are used in this process so most aluminium plants will have their own power station um, because they can use as much electricity as a, a small city and part of the reason for using such high currents is because the the flow of electricity through this melt will actually keep it molten. Another problem with this, although it's not something you're likely to be examined on, is the fact that the carbon anodes, they'll react with the oxygen that is produced at these electrodes because of the extremely high temperature. And so we'll have to keep replacing the carbon anodes. And that gives us another explanation for why aluminium is such an expensive metal, because these anodes are quite expensive to replace. Anyway, as I say, those sort of things aren't examined too much. What we certainly have to be able to do is to write half equations for what's going on in an electrolytic cell. So let's have a good look again at the electrolysis of molten lead bromide. Again, we can do this on a Bunsen because lead bromide has an unusually low melting point for an ionic substance. We're going to have a look here at what's going on at the anode. Now remember, it would be best if you think of the anode and the cathode not in terms of their charge, but in terms of what's getting oxidized or reduced. And we should remember that the anode is where oxidation happens. Now, if we've got lead 2 plus ions and bromide ions, then we should be able to see that only one of these ions can lose electrons, and that's the bromide ion. So oxidation is going to happen to the bromide ions, and it's going to happen at the positive electrode because that's where they're going to be attracted. So bromide ions are going to come along, and they're going to lose their electrons and turn into bromine, which you must remember is diatomic. So we need two bromide ions for that. And that's this half equation is on the data sheet anyway. But I suppose what's important is that we can say what we would see here. So we're going to be forming a red gas because bromine is going to evaporate at these sort of temperatures. And to know that this is going to happen at the anode and not the cathode because bromide ions get oxidized. Now let's have a look at what's going on at the cathode. And although electrolysis of molten substances is difficult from a practical perspective, from a theoretical perspective it's, perspective, it's very easy to see what's going on because there are only ever going to be two ions. Now, lead ions are the ones that are going to get reduced. They're going to gain electrons. Where is that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen at the negative electrode because positive ions are attracted to the negative electrode, and that's going to make lead, which would actually be molten at these temperatures but that's not the sort of thing you'd be expected to know. So just the formation of a silvery grey solid would be fine even though it's going to be a silvery grey liquid. Okay so there we go. Um, we've had a look at why this is a difficult thing to do electrolyzing molten substances in terms of um, practical considerations and that's to do with the melting points but hopefully we've seen that writing the half equations because of the limited number of ions present is actually quite a simple thing to do and as long as we can use our data sheet to look up the colors and appearances of the substances that we form then we should be able to predict the observations as well. Now if you've got any questions or comments then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.